So let me start with the uh, Apex Life. Apex Life is a 1998 Pixar uh, computer animation. Uh, it was done by by Pixar. It features Kevin Spacey, and I'll tell you why it's important <laughs> to 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 name uh, Kevin Spacey in this. So Kevin Spacey names Hopper. So Hopper is the is the hop is the is the grasshopper, the the main villain in the in the. In the in the animation, so the move the the the, the stuff was written by uh, John Lesser uh, back in '98. So this is the interesting part. Uh, there's a guy called uh, it, it, was, it was a black dude who after some sometimes they with his interaction with the ways in a movie set so in his trailer they wanted it was a, a, a it was a vip company but it d depended it it had african stuff so it had black people in america who were guarding Steve, uh, kevin spacey he didn't like it at all so he said the n-word uh, he didn't like the so he used the n-word so you'll read more about it so they they took him on but those guys were were very afraid and they even took it up to management to say kevin spacey used the n-word on us <laughs> uh, for all you know uh, they told him no man we got to keep him happy so they they proceeded on but that was the first series uh, season two their contract was gone and they lost about 22 million more than 22 million in the in the contract so that is kevin spacey the interesting thing about Kevin Spacey and how why he plays this movie, I want you. So he's the Hopper. He's the main villain. So I'm gonna pause now. So you listen to what uh, Hopper, the character played by Kevin Kevin Spacey, says because it 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 is going to explain the rest of uh, the 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 ten dissident that I'm going to talk about. Let's go. There was that ant that stood up to me. Yeah, but we can forget about him. Yeah, it was just one ant. <laughs> mm. One ant. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. It's just one ant. Yeah, boss. They're puny. Hmm, puny? Say, let's pretend this grain is a puny little ant. Did that hurt? <laughs> nope. Well, how about this one? Are you kidding? <laughs> well, how about this? You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. That's why we're going back. Does anybody else want to stay? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, so you could have seen that how how it rolled. So Kevin Spacey uh, was very brutal because it only takes one for for the administration. Those who are oppressing, they only need one person to stand up. So they say in African, uh, the proverb says, "You kill a head by you kill a snake by stepping on its head." So, all of these ten leaders that I'm that I'm going to, 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 to name here. They were all killed uh, by oppressors, of course, using proxies. Uh, number one, uh, 1963, Malcolm X. Malcolm X died. Uh, he, was, he was killed by, no, he didn't die in 1963. In fact, he died in 1965. But it was in 1963 when he said, uh, uh, chicken coming home to roost, that's when, uh, this uh, Kennedy died. So during the Kennedy, he said it's a case of chicken, uh, chickens coming home to roost. Whether he said it directly or not, we'll try to get a clip here. But that's what he said, and he broke away with the Nation of Islam because of that, and he was taken down. 1968, 
um, Malcolm X, no, not Malcolm X, man, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, he was killed by James L. Ray. So I'm not gonna quote. Uh, I mean, I think. So he, he he's the list of the people that I that I that I admire on the list uh, uh, on on this list. So I'm just gonna jump uh, Mal, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., the American uh, the American guy, uh, the Black Panther, very strong political party. So you understand around the time that they killed Malcolm X. Uh, in 1969, they killed Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton was a young, 21-year-old uh, leader of the Black Panther Party. Uh, he was the chairman, and he was in Chicago, and they were sleeping. Other people suspect he was drugged, but they moved in. So it was said is the cops and uh, and the FBI. They shot him dead while he was in his sleep. And whether he was drugged or whatever, I do not know. Uh, but his assassination, you could just read here to, to check who... Who I'll, I'll just show the name here who he was because all of these people who were died they were conspirators there were people behind just to make sure that they had this this mission and it's people were within them uh, Amilcar Cabral 1973 uh, him for him it was uh, in Isonchio Kani uh, it was believed to be working with the Portuguese uh, uh, assassins, uh, the, the agents, to kill him. So, America Cabral was, I mean, he's still quoted. He's, he's, he's one of Africa's uh, greatest minds. Uh, his literature is quoted by a lot of uh, freedom fighters. Uh, I think, uh, let, me, let me put it here. Uh, tell, <laughs> uh, tell no, uh, tell no, I, I forgot what he said, but you'll just see it here. So, Stephen Bantubiko. He he's the king of black consciousness movement in uh, in South Africa. He he was so let me let me quote, quote what he said. So as a prelude, whites must be made to realize that they are only humans and not superior. That's what he said. And he was killed in 1977. Uh, he was he was ambushed, he was trapped on his way. Uh, I think he was going to King William's time, I'm not sure, but he was captured, he was taken, he was, he was during cross-questioning, he was uh, tortured and he was, he was killed there. Uh, may his rose in peace. Uh, this is September, so September is Biko month in, in South Africa. Uh, 1987, Samara Mitchell, by he was killed by the apartheid government he was flying over south africa he was coming somewhere i don't i don't remember where he was coming from but he was going to to mozambique he he was flying through and his plane lost beacons and then the crash landed uh, uh, for him he i think what made him killed he started preaching unity and how strong africans should be when they unite and they took they took him on so it is always suspected i don't know with with who but suspect but is the apartheid uh whites who killed him 1987 my favorite by far on the list thomas noel sankara uh, he was killed in 1987 and what is most interesting about sankara is uh, he was killed two weeks after he made a speech where he was saying uh, they are gonna kill me if you don't support me he was at African Union. He was saying, uh, "This, this that you see, these deaths that we have, they are not deaths of our own. We did not incur these deaths. We can't be paying for people for enslaving us. So don't pay. Join me in not paying because should you leave me at the ledge, they're gonna kill me." That was Thomas Sankara, and they took him out. A young, brilliant man. He was 34. Uh, no, he was 34 when he took uh, when he took government. Um, Chris. Hani, 1993, freedom fighter of note uh, with Umkondo Wesis. Umkondo Wesis was the strong arm of the African National Congress. So what happened with him is he he was the more radical one in the African National Congress that took over the government of South Africa. And a lot of people think, they still suspect, that Chris Hani was killed by the African National Congress people or... Uh, the third force they used to call people third forces at the time. They, they, they were Askaris who were known to be deviating, who who 
who deviated from the ANC thing just go and kill him because there were lots of spies by the time. But he was killed by a man called Yanus Jalus uh, and and David Lewis who who was who who then got out of. But I think I, I don't I don't even care about about those guys. So you you I'll just just put information here. So that's Chris Hanim, uh, the South African guy, Muammar Gaddafi, 2011. Muammar Gaddafi was killed because he wanted to unite Africa. His biggest crime was to show Africa and Muammar Gaddafi, if anything that we know is true, because you know with this, with this uh, propaganda, you are always fed by, by the West. Uh, it's very difficult to have uh, uh, news bureaus in Africa uh, by independent news, uh, newscasters. So he was killed uh, in 2011 with the no-fly zone, uh, Resolution 1963, I can't remember. But he was killed because he had a vision of uniting Africa and to be he, he he believed a united Africa was stronger than anything and he had money to fund everything. Uh, he had gold reserves, he had there are still rumors even to this is more than ten years after he died, that his his golds, his his gold deposits are still stuck somewhere, uh, in, in, in South Africa by the way, uh, with few uh, with few people uh, as suspects. Uh, an odd man out in this list actually uh, the only reason i've put jamal Khashoggi is because he inspired uh, this thing that i that i did i watched this uh, documentary his late documentary a few times and uh, it's it is because of him that i say being a dissident is actually very difficult so uh, jamal was a hero it was journalistic hero. He covered a lot of things. He covered uh, the invasion of the uh, of Russia in in Afghanistan. How they worked. He was a hero. He was even close to the uh, Saudi family. We were told. And so what happened is in 2017 he left Saudi Arabia and he started uh, living in the USA. Uh, that that type of defection is not nice. So he left and he joined what in the in the in the in Arabia we call on the opposite side. So he went there. When he got there, he started writing columns, monthly columns, where he started criticizing uh, the the Saudi Arabian government and and and. So a lot of people. So he went. To, he went back. So in 2018, he went to Istanbul at the Saudi uh, consulate. I mean, everyone knows about. It's easy to Google. He went in. He didn't come back. And even today, I don't know any declaration or, or any confession of how he was killed. But you know, you could read between the lines uh, because he he wasn't in favor uh, with uh, with the Saudis, and he he paid with his life. And this is why the documentary "The Dissident" was made. So being a dissident is very dangerous. Uh, you go back to the thing because it is always the issue of there is that one that stood up to us. There was that ant that stood up to me. If you stand up to authority, it's very dangerous. You will lose your life, and the reason you are taken out is just to send a message to others. Everyone that you see here has been taken out because, chiefly because, you could inspire people, you could inspire. Uh, a revolution. It could be started like this. Uh, if you see uh, uh, the the twenty one year old uh, Fred Hampton is actually the one who inspired. You cannot kill. Uh, you can kill me, but you can't kill the revolution. He said you can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. And that has been quoted. Uh, the Black Panther. You know, Black Panther. Uh, it was an era where the FBI took everyone out as, as the freedom fighters in, in the USA. Had they not done that, the FBI, because all of this is alleged, of course, had they not done that, uh, they, had, they, could have, they could have been faced with a lot of uh, spiraling uh, political parties, to say. But we don't know how it would have went, but this is just suspected. But uh, being there as it may, so here are the heroes, all these guys were killed trying to be someone heroic and to inspire what would have been an Arab Spring. Uh, let me cut the long story.